But I thought what was funny, though, was this was the first time Coach had ever been on a, a cruise ship. And Glenn was there, too. Yeah. It was the first time he was ever on a cruise ship. And, and the first day when we got up and we were doing our devotion, I could tell that Coach didn't look real rested. So I said, did you have a good night's sleep? And he looked at me and he goes, well, no, I didn't. I go, well, what happened? He goes, well, I'm right underneath the discotheque. And he goes, I could hear that pounding until like 2 in the morning. I go, wow, that is, that is really a bummer. We need to get you a new room. But that was quite an experience. I think you, you were up almost all night. But the devotions were great. It was very encouraging. And most of you know about his history here in Tucson. And he's the most winning coach in the U of A's history. Two national championships. And, uh, Excuse but, me. Three. Three. Three national championships. You circle but, people. <laughs> but what I like most about Coach is his heart, and his heart for ministry, and his love for people. So let's welcome Coach Kim. Thank you, Doug. Thank you all for coming this morning. And, uh, somebody... Help me, who's, uh, what's the, uh, is this the square, our mathematical? Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to get this thing squared away here. So, um, that was a good exercise, Doug. <laughs> and, uh, Paul just I don't, leaned over to me and said, what was the circle, really? <laughs> <laughs> I go, Paul, it was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, folks, uh, I want to honor your time this morning. Uh, it's early, and yet you've got a full day ahead of you, uh, those of you that have to go to work. Uh, but I'm uh, retired. My grandchildren say I'm retarded, not retired. <laughs> uh, but uh, I do value the time with you this morning to uh, share my faith, talk about Jesus, and how it relates to everyday life. And that's why you folks are here, I dare say, because you want to take your faith into the marketplace, into the neighborhood, to the community, as well as in your home, uh, to represent the Lord Jesus Christ in the Tucson community and surrounding. And it's an exciting thing to do that. It's a challenging thing, it's a difficult thing, but it is an exciting and an eternal thing to have Christian men and women in our community that, are, that have drawn that line in the sand, that they have taken a stand, and they are steadfast and growing together as you are here in this fellowship once a month, and beyond that in our, in our churches, and in wherever God has placed us, as lay people. And uh, I want to share with you uh, some things that uh, God has shown me in my life, in my long journey uh, since I first became a Christian back in St. Paul, Minnesota, as a teenager, many, many years ago. And that uh, is part of the introduction, a segue, if you will, because uh, in my home church back in St. Paul, little little church that mom and dad and Grandpa Erickson, who lived with us, my mom's dad, uh, we attended this little church, Elam Covenant Church, a Swedish denomination, came out of the history of the Pietistic <coughs> movement in Sweden, and the immigrants came over, the Evangelical Covenant Church, and they, uh, and I value, I value, I'm so grateful that I was in a church and had a mother and father and grandpa who looked over our shoulders in his Swedish way, to make sure that we were toeing the mark. But I'm so grateful I had a Christian home. And uh, they, I had mom, dad, and grandpa praying for me, because I was rambunctious and, and uh, out of sorts most of the time. And I was a challenge. Uh, a smart aleck kid is what I was. But uh, in our church, we loved to sing the old hymns. And uh, one of them that came to mind as I was thinking about what to say this morning, this was uh, several weeks ago, uh, and I was already planning, which is unusual for me, <laughs> and I looked that far ahead to the responsibility, because I'm more or less a winged guy. But uh, the, 
something came to mind that uh, reminded me of the church, and that was the, the hymns that we would sing, some of them in Swedish, as a matter of fact. And I thought of this uh, hymn, and maybe some of you know it. God leads his children along. God leads his dear children along. I found one of our hymnals and ran off this uh, sheet that has the lyrics, the melody. Don't worry, I'm not going to sing it for you. <laughs> but uh, it uh, has a, a special meaning to me because that is how God has worked in my life, by leading me along, sometimes screaming and kicking and, it, and dragging my heels. He's led me as I have come to faith in Christ way back then. He's led me through something close to 60 years now in, in the faith and walking with Jesus. Ups and downs, failures and successes, many failures. But God's faithfulness in leading me along. I just want to read to you some of the uh, lyrics here. Uh, the refrain is, uh, some through the waters, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, but God gives a song in the night season and all the day long. That's the refrain sung over and over again after the three verses. <laughs> the third verse, though sorrows befall us and, evil oppose, and evils oppose, God leads his dear children along. Through grace we can conquer, defeat all our foes. God leads his dear children along. Some through the waters, some through the flood, some through great uh, sorrow. Excuse me. Some through the waters, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, and this is the phrase that I want to build some remarks around. Some through great sorrow, but God gives a song. In the night season, and all the day long. Keep that. File that there for a moment or two, and uh, let me continue. Uh, in uh, September of 2001, nine years ago, Diane and I were in Paris. I had uh, spent the summer coaching baseball in Sweden.